I, I just I just want to mention that we have three working groups: ETL, ontology, and user interface. Um, they're all volunteers, and they you know they meet every month and they do a lot of work. So uh, so kudos to them. So here here we go. Our first esteemed speaker, Mike Mendes. <clears throat> That's what they said. You're good. Oh, okay, cool. Hi. Hey, welcome everyone. Morning. 8.45, I know. Uh, so a quick agenda. Uh, so basically I'm gonna talk a little bit about the history of what we've done in the past, kind of what some future stuff, and then because this is an AI, uh, we wanna talk a little bit about just some genomics and AI work that we're thinking about doing. Uh, Okay, so some of the past things that we've done in the past is, uh, so when we first kind of set up the ETL working group, we kind of wasn't exactly sure what to do with it, how we should proceed. Uh, we knew that people needed to get data into the IWG system, because otherwise you can't query. So we started out by writing some documentation, some best practices, things like that. And so we created a, a GitHub repository, we put all that into it. Uh, then we were like, okay, we need to do some uh, validation stuff. So we started looking at stuff, and we uh, kind of uh, toned it a little bit on the Achilles work. And so we basically kind of grabbed a lot of their stuff and then kind of merged it. Am I not talking to the speaker? <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> I have uh, another five minutes. <laughs> I was supposed to start at 8.45 now. So, okay. <clears throat> So yeah, so um, lost my concentration. So yeah, so we took some of the Achilles work and we basically kind of merged into the, uh, the ITP2 uh, star schema so that you could validate stuff like finding patients who were over 150 years old or patients who had uh, observations that were had after their death day, uh, people who were born before now. Uh, actually, no, that's born after now, not before now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and stuff like that. So, and then we did kind of like a breakdown of age, kind of a, a, a chart of that, just to make sure that the, we validated the data. Okay. Uh, so then, at the time, we were also ACT was uh, in full fling. And so we took the ACT ontology and we merged it into the ITB2 uh, repository also. So that at the time, people who wanted to upgrade uh, some of their app ontologies had to do a lot of work. And so we kind of worked with Michelle and we actually got it into the repository. So it's an easy upgrade and we could also do the total norms and stuff like that. Um, and then COVID-19 uh, came along and then we did, so, uh, we created a, a synthetic data set with uh, 1.2 million patients and we had about 2,000 patients who had COVID in it, so that people could then use some of the newer ACT ontologies and um, query that, and then understand how that works so that they can actually implement it into their production environment. Uh, so the bulk exporter, so I kind of went over this a little bit yesterday, but I'll kind of rehash again. So the bulk exporter is kind of an ETL uh, tool that ex extracts data from your repository. And so the bulk exporter is, is going to be part of the 1.8 release, hopefully before the end of the year. And the idea of the bulk exporter is uh, you can export the data from uh, on the server side instead of using something like the client export XLS, which is on the client side. So we can actually, it's a lot quicker because it doesn't have to create the whole PDO object, send it across the client, extract it. So. Uh, in the performance, I'm saying that it took about 10 minutes, but I think it's actually a lot less than that. That was on a virtual machine. Uh, and it created a four gig file without any issues. Creating a four gig file on your client would have, is a little problematic. Uh, and also you're allowed to, basically, like I said, you can uh, compress the files however you want, uh, encrypt them, uh, create, the file structure in any way you want, whether it's a pivoted table or whether it's just the standard observation fact as you see it normally, or you can join multiple tables together. Um, oh, oh, I should have said this in the beginning, but uh, 
if you know me, I usually just, if you have any questions, just raise your hand or just say, hey, I have a question, instead of waiting until the end. Uh, <clears throat> so if there's any questions, just all around. Uh, so yeah, so that's the export, uh, bulk exporter. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, you could come up here, Michelle. <laughs> how the bulk exporter actually works, how it connects to the back end of I2B2, how, you know, it's kind of elegant how you're doing it with the... Okay, yeah, sure, you know? certainly, yeah. <clears throat> so the bulk exporter um, basically utilizes all the existing tables in the I2B2 structure. And it's similar to the breakdowns. So you have your age breakdown, your race breakdown. It utilizes all of those tables and actually a lot of the code behind it. So when you're creating, um, like, let's say you want to uh, export demographic information from the patient dimension table, all you do is you create a select statement, select uh, patient number, uh, birthday, death day, race, from patient uh, dimension, and then you have to uh, do a where clause. And so you put that select statement into the um, QT result type table. And that's, and then you just give it a name, and then when um, you bring up the plugin, you'll see. I wish I could kind of, exp <laughs> I wish I had slides for it, but unfortunately. So when you bring up the uh, plugin, you'll see all of the different breakdowns or the different uh, exports that you have available, such as like demographics or medications, or you can do like a pivoted table. So, okay. Okay, uh, so I want to go a little, okay, yep. Oh, geez, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to go a little bit into ETL AI. So as some of you who are in the ETL working group, we wanted to do something for this conference. And so we were thinking, okay, AI, what can we do? And so we kind of uh, honed down on creating uh, a way to like type in a kind of a chat GPT thing. They say, I want to find all patients who have diabetes and is taking metformin. And it would actually just create the whole query and just put it into the UI. You'll see, like you'll see uh, diabetes and metformin as your medication and it will have the number of patients. And so I'm like, yeah, that's great. Uh, so we started working on that and then um, uh, people found out about it and they were like, oh, well, actually that's not really ETL-ish, but we actually do have another section that we could actually put that in. And that's at the 3.30. And Sean Murphy's gonna be big, uh, talking about uh, a lot of stuff beforehand. So I kind of wanted to bring, um, <clears throat> so the group, what, what do you guys think of like the ETL group? I know the AI is kind of very um, important and fast moving thing. Um, what what do people think about the future of the ETL working group and AI? That's why I, I want to bring that as an open question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I use microphones. Okay, yes. Um, in full disclosure, I'm part of the uh, ETL AI working group. So. Yeah. Oh, yes. Chris <laughs> I did a lot of work and I haven't biased. seen Nicholas. Is, is he, yeah, he's is, is he only joined him? later by... Uh, um, uh, one of our colleagues that was instrumental in help in working with Mike to, to really do what we're going to show um, at the end of the day. But um, I think as we were talking about AI and the use cases for AI, the one of the most important and overlooked issues is the data movement and um, regulatory and practical sort of issues, operational issues of, of moving uh, sensitive data around and training it and, and the like. And so a lot of the tenets that Mike was just talking about in the bulk exporter uh, were used as part of the, 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 plat the AI instance, the POC that we built. So um, I think that once this all maybe settles out um, in terms of like where the AI components are gonna live long-term, um, it's gonna be an ETL issue in terms of the training process. And that's really what we, we talked about. Um, we'll talk about it at the POC, but you know, going forward beyond that, it, it, it would be interesting to hear what people 
you know what other people think about about where this uh, you know where this process could you know could live. Great, thanks. <laughs> I think it's probably early in the morning, so <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, yeah, so like Chris said, we'll be demoing uh, all this work that we did at 3.30, right? Uh, around 3.30, so come join us in, and I think the Ecology Working Group is next. <laughs>